is a video that takes you through lesson one of this band lab task um, regarding creating a waltz. Um, we're starting today just with um, one part of the task, which is to write a melody. And we're going to write this in at least two, but for some of you, four different ways. Um, so today you've got a variety of tasks on your work. Make sure that you do that task one first, because that's about feedback from your Schoology assessment. If you haven't done the Schoology assessment, please make sure that's done as soon as possible. That is an assessment from last half term. But the main task today is this practical work. Um, so this is in BandLab as usual, edu.bandlab.com. Um, for any of you who still don't have BandLab, you can do this work live on a piano or keyboard or on a virtual piano um, if that's the way it's going. But if you do that, you will need to video your work and email it to your teacher. So the first thing I've discovered is that this is a little bit fast. So first thing it says is change the tempo to 100 beats per minute and you do that here in this thing where it says BPM that stands for beats per minute it'll come up at 120 when you turn it on you just click on it and move the cursor up or down and that changes the speed we want it at 100 so there we go you'll see that the time signature here is set in 3-4 meaning there are three beats in a bar and that is because we are writing a waltz and a waltz always has three beats in a bar some of you have found before the assignment brief is quite annoying and gets in the way. If you want to get rid of that, you just click there on assignment brief. OK, so when you load it, you'll find this track already recorded. This is the chords track. If you listen to it, you'll hear it's got four chords. And then they repeat round several times as we go through. Um, those chords are written on your lesson plan here. But for now, I've put them on a sticky note so that I can use them at this end. Um, so the reason I've written them down is because it's going to be really important that you know which notes are in which chord. So we're using four chords, C, A minor, D minor, and G. So in a C chord, we have C, E, and G. In an A minor chord, A, C, and E. In a D minor chord, D, F, and A. And in a G chord, G, B, and D. And if we look here at the chords, we can see clearly there's three notes in each chord. And if we click on the MIDI editor, you can do that by double clicking, we can see that those are the notes that we've got. C, E and G in that first chord, and that matches those notes that we know. So to create our first melody, we're going to go as simple as we can. We're just going to put one note with each of these four chords. OK, so at this point, I need my instrument. Here it is. Make sure it works. Yes, it does. OK. So I'm back to the beginning, and to start off with, I'm just going to try different things out. So I could just try using the first letter of each chord, and that would sound like this. Okay, I didn't do that very well because I was trying to keep up, and also I've discovered that I'm on the wrong track. I need to highlight this one, and then it will come up a bit higher and on a flute sound so it's easier to listen to. So let's just try that again. So that was just using the notes C, and then A, and then D, and then G. It's okay, but it's not very inspirational because it matches exactly the pattern of the chord. So I could choose a different one. I could choose just to use the middle letters. That would go E, C, F, B. Have a listen to what that sounds like. Here we go. Um. Still quite a jumpy one. Okay, so maybe I can look for some notes which are next to each other. So I've got notes that are in both chords here, but I've also got a G going to an A. So I could start off with a G going to an A. Here we go. Whoops, that is not a G. Let's try that again. Okay. And then I need notes that are near my A. So I could play A again, but that's quite boring. So I might try the F. And F is near G. So I get G, A, F, G. Here we go. Let's try it. Okay, when I record this, I'm going to record it with the metronome on just so that I can hear exactly where those beats are. 
So I'm going for three beats on each note so it matches my chords. I'm going to record that in. And there I've got my first bit of melody. You can see that this note matches with that first chord, this note with the second chord, this note with the third chord, and this note with the fourth chord. So we've just got one note in each bar. Again, if I double click it, I can see it in the MIDI editor. And if I've not uh, recorded it particularly well in time, I can go into my uh, quantize and just make sure it's really, really exact. And then I can listen to it back. I'm going to turn the metronome off because it gets quite annoying. Okay, if I was being picky about this, um, I would be making some of these notes longer. Oh, that's all of them longer. Okay, or one at a time, just to make sure that we get the feeling of them all joining up and creating that sense of legato or smoothness. That's bad. Okay, so that's task one. That's written here on your instructions. Melody one, create a melody where there is one note for each chord. The note must be one of the notes in the chord. And I can just check that because I've used G, which is here, A, which is there, F, which is here, and G again, which is here. Okay, so that's stage one. Everybody should be able to manage that in the time. Melody two is here. Melody two, if you look again in band lab, we're just going to put it here in this next section. So the chords are identical, and what we're doing is not creating something completely new, but developing what we've already got. So in the lyrics section, I've written down what notes I've chosen for my melody so that I don't forget them. Okay, and as I go along, um, I can start adding other notes in. Um, here we go. And then A, and then F, and then G. Because what Melody 2 tells me to do, it says record the melody again, but add a note to join each melody note to the next. Both the notes must be notes from the chord. The reason it says that, that both the notes must be notes from the chord is because we know that if a note is in the chord, then it will sound nice with the chord. If it's not a note in the chord, it can sound quite clashing and be quite unpleasant. Um, so I had G, A, F and G. Now I'm going to look again at my chords. So I'm going from G to A and I need to find a chord note that I could put in between. So let's just get my instrument back. Here we go. So here's my thing. So I could go G, E, A. It sounds okay. I could go up to C instead. G, C, A. I think I prefer that one. So I'm going to put a C in there and that'll help me to remember. Okay, and then in my A chord here, I've got an A, C and an E. And I'm trying to get from an A to an F. So I'm going to choose another note. I'm going to choose E because it's the obvious one that's going nicely in between. So now I've got G, C, A, and then E, F. And I need one note in between my F and my G. So I'm probably going to go up to the A there. And that's my melody now. I've got G. There we go. It's not working. Here we go. That's better. G. It's still not working. G, C, A, E, F, and then A, G, it's because it's still typing up there, which is quite annoying. So I'm just going to close that and then open it again and then hopefully yeah, that instrument's going to work now. So I need to move my cursor up here to bar 5 where the second bit of melody is going to start. And so my notes are going to be the same, but with an extra note probably on the third beat of each bar. I'm going to put my metronome back on. Here we go. And I'm going to record that in. And now I can obviously go in and quantize that and tidy it up. But I can listen to those two melodies one after the other. I'm just going to make my melody a bit louder and my chords just a bit quieter so that they're balanced a bit better. And I can hear first the simple one. And now the one that's slightly more complicated. So 
those two melodies, that's the end of the core work for today. But some of you will want to carry on into the optional tasks. because The optional tasks give you a chance to develop that, this melody further into something, again, slightly more complicated. So down here, we've got melody three. It says record the melody again, but this time add more shorter notes between each main note. You can now include notes that are not in the chord. So I'm going to start off just by copying this. Here we go. Now it's melody three. OK. Now I've created G, C, A, and C and A, we can see from the keyboard, are not next to each other. So I could fill in that gap with a B. Whoops. Here we go. And now our melody will sound like this. Oh, let's get back in that loop. There we go. So again, that would be G, C, B, A. Okay. I don't have to do it every time, but I can if I want to. I'm definitely going to put an F in here. I like that. So I've got G. I've lost it again. So I'm just going to get mad. Here we go. G. should then work okay as you can see it's a little bit difficult to swap between typing in the lyrics and playing on the instrument again if you want it to go back just click on something else click back on it and now the instrument should work fine and playing that just pressing on the keyboard okay so again line your cursor up when you're ready turn your metronome on let's see if we can record this one make sure I start on the right note here we go Okay, that can happen to anybody. I highlight it, just press backspace on my keyboard, and I can start again straight away. There we go, that was much better that time. And melody four, all it does is this time it asks you to change the rhythm. Now the rhythm is simply changing how long each note is. So I've been playing for a while, I've been playing this rhythm. Whoops. Which means every bar is starting with a long note. So I could just play that note more than once. Or I could move to the second note earlier on. Whoops. still using the same letters that I was using before for melody three but I'm just changing up the rhythm a little bit and at this point you can try out all sorts of different rhythms and come up with one that works best okay so those two the last two that we've talked about are the optional tasks so just to go through it one more time the first one you're just picking one note from each chord one note to match each chord and then melody two two notes to match each chord but the second one comes towards the end of the bar here we're adding even more notes but this time we're moving away from the notes of the chord as long as they're short notes that will work really quite well and then in melody four which is where you get to really experiment you can change up the rhythm but the important thing is to use your ears all the time check what sounds good always make decisions about what you want it to sound like so that you end up with the best melody that you can create. As we go through the term, we're gonna be using different um, chord sequences. You're gonna be creating some yourself. We're gonna be combining it with the work that you've done on cadences yesterday, um, or earlier in the week, or even last week. Um, and we'll be combining new theory knowledge with these practical tasks. So do try and keep up if you can. Have a go, enjoy. Thank you, you know.